Hi, I'm Katie Robertson of Community Conversations. I'm here with Lauren Gallagher and Leslie Leahy, and they're going to talk to us about Shop the Block. Thank you, ladies, for being with us today. Thanks Thank for you. having us. Um, so can you give us a little history about Shop the Block, what it is, how it came to be in Reading, and, and what people can expect? Shop the Block started in 2003. That was the first year we had the event. And a couple of the downtown retailers got together and decided that it would be great to bring awareness to the downtown and what the different shops have to offer. So the very first year, we only had six retailers participating. Um, they advertised throughout town. And um, the idea was to have a holiday stroll where people could come down and see what the stores um, had for sale on um, at Christmas time and just to meet up with their neighbors and then have a nice night out. It's really become um, more of a woman's night. You know, they really plan ahead of time. It's a, we all stay open much later than our normal hours. So, you know, people that work till six or work till seven, they can still get there because we're open from five to nine. And it's on a Thursday night, so it doesn't usually have a lot of conflict with sports and sporting events or anything going on in schools. So I'm sure that's very helpful for a is. lot of people, especially people who are, are looking for holiday mm -hmm. materials. Is that kind of a, a beginning de of December kind of uh, idea as well? Well, it's kind of sandwiched into a very festive week in Reading. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> because uh, prior to Shop the Block, um, there's Thanksgiving, of course. And then um, in recent years, American Express has, has developed Small Business Saturday, which has become very big. And on Sunday of Thanksgiving weekend, our Reading, North Reading Chamber of Commerce puts on the Holiday Lighting Festival downtown. So um, people are very much in the holiday spirit. <laughs> and then Shop the Block comes on Thursday. So it gives people an opportunity to come downtown have some dinner at one of our great restaurants, and just walk around and see what Reading has to offer. Um, so my favorite part, what's the shopping like? <laughs> um, who do you usually have participate, and, um, and what can people expect from, from those re retailers? Well, we would like everyone who is on the Main Street, Haven Street block to participate. And um, every year, the number of uh, businesses that participate kind of fluctuates. Mm -hmm. but. Um, we have, oh, yeah. a, we have anywhere between 18 and about 25 businesses that usually um, participate. It grows year after year, especially, I mean, we have a lot of new businesses in town, and that's just wonderful mm -hmm. that they want to be part of it. Um, the shopping is really unique. It's very different because you can go from Sims Jewelers to Good Hearts to Anya's and do all of Main Street, and then go to Pamplemousse, the wine shop, and have you know wine tastings, and then travel from there and go to others. <laughs> um, down in our corner, we have the Hitching Post. And there's also a lot of hair salons that are part of the evening, which I think is great. They make a little party out of it. They sell their products. A lot of people will do specials or have snacks. And it keeps people moving all around the corners. So down by us, we have Pamplemousse and Hitching, Hitching Post. and everything but the dog and then around the corner even we have the flower shop in um, Antea Amoroso and so there's a lot of really unique fun places to poke around. It sounds like it's more than just a shopping event too that there's that there's other activities going on um, like performances or, and restaurants participating is that correct? We do we have um, creative arts is always been a part of it um, so it's nice we have children and even some parents and some teachers that are involved and they'll go around to various shops and play for about 15 minute sessions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's very fun. Also, um, we found in the beginning we would have a trolley that would take people around in case it was too cold, people didn't want to walk. But what we found over the years is that people prefer to walk. It's more of a holiday stroll. Like they'll do Main Street, go down to the Chocolate Truffle, come around and, and do all of Haven Street. And people just, um, like to be out and be social and meet yeah. up with their neighbors. Mm -hmm. And very often, I know in my store anyway, I've had groups of people who haven't seen each other in a long mm -hmm. time chatting the evening away and, and, uh, and just enjoying the community. And I think it's nice, too, because we have great collaboration amongst the businesses in Reading. And um, it's, it's just a fun night to showcase our, our businesses. I think it's a, a great event for the business community as well to highlight the the great businesses that we do have in town. Mm -hmm. It does seem to me that there, it, that's been um, increasing lately, um, definitely pretty pretty exponentially. So it's it's good to kind of highlight that mm -hmm. it's such a 
festive time of year. <laughs> it is, and we also have had in the past, in, in different manners, we've had a, a charity component as well. Oh, um, great. At one time, all the businesses involved would support the same charity, but w as the event grew and um, there were too many businesses to to coordinate to do that, we all kind of do our own thing. You pick a charity of our choice. We might have a raffle. We might do a special that night that will support um, one of our local organizations. So that's nice too because it's important to give back. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's fantastic. Hopefully the weather is good. I mean, <laughs> we have had very good luck. We have. <laughs> yeah. Great, I hope. Yeah. We really have. Had. The Stick weather that. gods have smiled upon us. Yes. <laughs> Our very first Shop the Block in 2003, we only had six re retailers participating. But um, just it was like on cue at five o'clock. We had snow flurries oh, to get people cool. in the in the mood, and it was a great night. And I think because the first one was so successful, people just really enjoyed it. And again, it, you know, it's grown from year to year. So, um, how can people find out more about Shop the Block? Is there um, media or or anything that we can? We do have. We have a Facebook page. Okay, great. Um, and we also are going to be hanging posters throughout the town in the participating shops as well as in the library and the Y, the y and different places like that. Um, we will be posting some ads in local papers, things along that line, but we're really trying to get the word out through via Facebook and through via our email lists. We really try to do that too. Mm -hmm. And I know the, um, the retailers aren't all uh, listed yet, but is that something that mm -hmm. you publicize? Um, as it gets closer or, or, or not? It's definitely put on our Facebook page. Okay, just because great. it does mm -hmm. happen, we get a few last minute ones, <laughs> we get a few that um, we wait on specials because we do like to promote what everyone's going to be doing that evening too. Mm -hmm. So that usually tends to happen last minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully um, you'll get a, a big turnout. I'm sure that it'll, it'll be uh, an exciting time. And as you said, it's a big time for the business community in Reading uh, that week with, mm -hmm. with other events going on yeah. as well. Um, so that's really exciting. Um, uh, now, are you participating in any of those other events going on um, in December and the tree lighting you mentioned and the other Chamber of Commerce events? Oh, well, Small Business Saturday, definitely. Yes. Um, that's usually a big day um, for people to come down and shop. I think it really, all the advertising that American Express does really promotes the shop local message. Um, so that's usually a very big day. And then the, the tree lighting, again, is a great day for families to come out and enjoy the community. There are a lot of activities on the common. Mm -hmm. I think they are planning things up and down Haven Street yeah. as well. Um, and that's usually when a lot of our, I know myself and Leslie, we tend mm -hmm. to open on, start opening on Sundays for mm -hmm. the remainder of the holiday. Oh, good, yeah. So sure. that's usually yeah. our first day, too, when the tree lighting is going mm -hmm. on. Right after Thanksgiving, So it's nice, yeah. 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 Um, so that's great. Uh, Shop the Block is Thursday, December 3rd, correct? Exactly. So what's the time frame, just so that we can get that out there as well? Five to nine. Five to nine. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, thank you both for being here, uh, and we will be right back with Community Conversation. The only thing you can really do at the end of the day is compare a guy to his contemporaries. Right. It's hard to compare Brady to Terry Bradshaw. The game was different in the 70s than it is now. They've won something like 15 or 16 more games than any other team in the NFL yep. in that span of time. Luck looks like an NFL quarterback. Um, I remember I called everyone I knew when they, when they uh, traded for Garnett. Um, that was just one of the most amazing things <laughs> of my life. <laughs> if John Farrell could fix John Lester, then your pitching problem is partially solved. Kareem had that one unstoppable shot, the sky hook, and he milked it for, what, 35,000 points or something like that. Just, again, versatility, Mr. Patriot. Yeah. If you needed something, he's going to get it done. I am to this show as Alex Baldwin is to SNL. So. <laughs> this is the infamous Jason Barrett that shoves uh, his glove yes. right into Alex Rodriguez's face. <laughs>
Hello, I'm here with Lisa Egan, who is the uh, Executive Director of the Reading North Reading Chamber of Commerce. Nice to have you here today, Lisa. Thank you for having me. So I know a lot of people have heard of the Chamber of Commerce, and most towns that you go to have Chambers of Commerce. Uh, but what exactly is a Chamber of Commerce? A Chamber of Commerce is a nonprofit group. It's usually made up of business owners and people involved in the community, mm -hmm. really to help the, the town thrive. Okay. We want a downtown that's vibrant. We mm -hmm. want stores to be open. We mm -hmm. want them to be in business. And right. we want to do events for the community. We want to highlight Reading's downtown. We're fortunate to have a beautiful, pretty recently redone town center with, sure. a, with a common and a main street and right. a green. So we like to do events not only for our business community members. Mm -hmm. Those might be networking events where they can uh -huh. meet people. We do educational events like sure. say the credit card technology is changing, okay. um, which actually happened in October. We'll have someone <laughs> come in and t talk to sure. people who accept credit cards. So the business owners can keep up to date with yeah, what current the, practices are. Exactly. And like if you're not compliant, what are the implications? Uh, you know, okay. yeah. There's overtime laws that happen at a state sure. level. So we like to keep people in the loop on all those things. Right. Um, if there's issues with taxes in town, signage changes, right. we try to think of things that affect both retailers as well as service industry people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So anyone who owns a business is always welcome. You don't even have to live or work in Reading. We have okay. people from surrounding communities right. who just want to grow their network right. um, of people and associates just to share best practices, sure. referrals, that kind of thing. Um, and then we do a fair amount of regular community events as well. So really, um, when we talk about the Chamber of Commerce, it's made up primarily of business people who have businesses in Reading or North Reading. But, uh, but it could be anybody, really. Anybody yes. who has an interest in things of business. Exactly. <laughs> and so your job is as the executive director. So what exactly does that entail? Well, it entails um, being the face of the chamber, okay. making sure people know that we do different events. For example, before I started with the chamber, I've lived in Reading for 13 years, mm -hmm. and I always brought my family to the tree lighting, but I didn't realize or appreciate that it's the Chamber of Commerce that does okay. it. It's not a okay. town. We work with the town, sure. but it's not a town um, event. The Chamber of Commerce buys the lights. They make. We work with all different departments within the town, from DPW right. and the police and the fire, mm -hmm to hang all those lights, replace the lights and the bows and the garland, and um, coordinate getting it all up there in right. addition to the tree lighting, which kind of kicks off the whole season. Right, right. So so one of the reasons we're here today is to talk about the tree lighting event, which is coming up uh, here at the end of November. So tell us a little bit about that. Maybe the, start with the origin of that. What is kind of the origin of that, as, as you know, as you would know? Of course. You know, I think about 20 years ago, the town started putting lights up there for the yeah. holidays. Yeah. And the chamber got involved maybe as, as long ago as 15 years ago. Okay. Leslie McGonigal, who, who runs Reading Gymnastics Academy, mm -hmm. and several other people who w lived and work in Reading said we should really plan something nice for the town, a, a way for us to give back to the sure. community sure. and create this um, very family-friendly, low-cost to free um, occasion to kind of mm -hmm. kick off the holiday season. Mm -hmm. So it's been going on for 24 years. I think the chamber has done it for... 15 to 20 of those okay. years. Okay. Um, so it's really a nice event that happens in the, in the common. There's all sorts of stuff. It's not just the actual physical lighting of the lights, but there are other things that go on as well kind of to kind of help people remember during the holiday season that the businesses in downtown Reading are there. Uh, what are some of the other events that go on along with the actual physical lighting of the lights? Yes, this year we have, um, we're, we're going to have a nice tent with restaurant tastings oh, down okay. at the train From local depot, restaurants? From local restaurants. Um, we'll have um, food from a few different vendors. I know we'll have Harrow's Chicken Pie. Okay. We're going to have the Horseshoe's going to bring their pulled pork. They're right mm -hmm. in North Reading. Um, a few other restaurants will be providing cocoa, snacks, sweets. Sure. Um, so it'll really just be like great free samples for local businesses. Great. And then also down at the train, we're going to have um, Zumba down by the train de depot mm -hmm. from 3 to 4 that day. Okay, and that's Zumba using holiday music. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so it's, you know. So you can work off the goodies you just ate. You sure tent. can. <laughs> or you can just watch. The oh, instructors okay. are okay. from the Burbank YMCA, right. and they have a big following. You know, it's choreographed to the holiday music. Right. It's fun. It's festive. And it'll just be something fun for people to kind of watch and showcase sure. Sure. what they do at the Y, which is great fitness programs, including the Zumba. Right, right. What other things are happening besides those things down at the depot? Any other uh, specific activities happening around the Common or up and down Haven Street that Yes, day? yes. We'll have ice sculptures on the Common, okay. um, which we've had the last couple of years. So those are really cool to check out, mm -hmm. very unique. 
Um, we also have a bounce house for kids. They can stop by and enjoy that. The Doyon's TV and Appliance gives out free popcorn and balloons up mm -hmm. at the Common. And then we have a horse-drawn hayride that goes around um, the downtown area and okay. a trolley. Oh, I think those okay. are both like either two dollars a person or five right. a family. Okay. We have carolers on mm -hmm. the the trolley, so it really gets you in the mood. Sure. Um, I know Venetian Moon will be open, and they're going to have okay. Mrs. Claus there. Oh. And Reading Co-op always hosts Santa, mm. and to accommodate those with young ones, Santa will be there as early as one o'clock that day. Wow. Okay. So it's Sunday, November 29th. Okay. The event is really from two to four thirty. Santa's getting at the coop a little early. Sure. Because there's nothing worse <laughs> than telling a young one that the line for Santa's long and right. putting yeah. putting down the golden rope that they you know That's won't right. be able to see him. That's right. So Santa will be there, and it just they take pictures, and it's all free, and it's mm -hmm. fun, and. A lot of businesses give out goodie bags okay. or little treats or, you mm -hmm. know, cocoa, cider, that kind of thing, really to make it a holiday stroll. So there's a lot sure. to do downtown. You can go spend the afternoon and go into the different stores and, right. you know, check out their fair and also sure. maybe get a couple errands done, holiday shopping. Sure. So I was going to ask you about that. You know, obviously this is a big undertaking for the chamber to, to, to put on every year. Uh, what benefits do you think are derived from it for um, the members of the chamber as well as other businesses downtown? Well, I think it's nice because a lot of people will say, oh, I've always walked by Pample Moose, but I've never gone in. Okay. Or, oh, I've always walked by the Hitching Post, and I keep meaning to go in. Or Anya's, but I, I've not stopped in there yet. Right. Or Raspberry Beret up on Main Street. I mm -hmm. think that it's nice to showcase our downtown. We want to drive foot traffic and get people into those stores. Mm -hmm. And we really want to encourage stores to stay open right. and also welcome people in with either, you know, a candy sure. cane or something fun sure. just to show off what we have downtown. Because yeah. otherwise we're all going to be on Amazon.com and our storefronts <laughs> are going to be closed. And then that doesn't do anybody. No, any it doesn't. I seem to remember reading a statistic. I don't remember the exact numbers, but it was something to the effect of every dollar spent locally, 87 cents or something like that of it stays locally, where any dollar you spend at a, a, a online, like, almost none of it stays locally. So the That's idea of right. supporting local businesses is that your money that you would spend anyway mm -hmm. stays here and stays in Reading and helps support not only Reading people but also you know Reading concerns and that kind of thing. Absolutely because those businesses are paying taxes, they're mm -hmm. funding the town. We're actually doing a little campaign called Keep the Cheer Here oh, along okay. those lines because as you say when you spend money locally it benefits us all whether sure. you know our, our nice downtown makes our home values go up yep. and it makes our community more desirable sure. and that translates into more money for our schools right. and it really is kind of a big circle so yeah we want to encourage people to come downtown and do their shopping right. um, for the holiday season. Absolutely. So set the schedule for me for uh, for the particular day. You said it goes 2 to 4 30. Is there a schedule of events during that time or is everything open during that time and when exactly does the tree lighting part happen? Yes let me break it down a little bit. Sure. So at 1 o'clock that's when Santa that's when will Santa arrive arises. at Reading Co-op. Yeah. So a little early because we know especially People with strollers or young right. ones, maybe they don't want to risk being in a line, and mm -hmm. I can pr appreciate that. Sure. So Santa will come a little early at 1 at Reading Co-op on Haven Street, mm -hmm. but the event really kicks off in earnest from 2 to 4. Um, 2 o'clock is when all the restaurant tents will be open down okay. at the end of Haven Street by, by the, the depot. depot. Yeah. We'll have the bounce house. The Zumba schedule we're finalizing, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be probably 2.30 to 3.30, hoping we can do it right down adjacent mm -hmm. to like Portland Pie. Right. And right. then that's also where we want to do our ugly sweater contest, the which I'm very contest. excited yes, about. You mentioned that. We're gonna do ugly Christmas sweater runway. <laughs> we have a professional photographer. Okay. And we're just gonna have like a runway on the street. We're yeah. not gonna build a stage. But it so will be really fun. we're encouraging people to wear their ugly holiday sweaters. Absolutely, for the, for the it'll be. Um, it's sponsored by Reading Light Department. They're going to have judges there. Okay. And we've got great prizes. The um, best adult ugly sweater will get a hundred dollar gift card to Biltmore in Maine, our mm -hmm. new restaurant. And the best kids ugly sweater will get a twenty five dollar gift card to Plaster Fun Time. Excellent. So I think a hundred dollars is worth going out, and you know. Yeah, investing it, ten bucks in an ugly sweater somewhere. <laughs> yes, if you Google ugly sweaters, you'll find all sorts of good ones. It. You know, Absolutely. Walmart, J.C. Penney, Kmart, Target, anywhere. So there'll be plenty to do for plenty uh, to do during that time period between the two and yes. four, and then at four thirty is when the big event happens. Yes, four o'clock is when things start winding down, and we're okay. hoping to have perhaps a drummer from the Reading 
um, band come and kind of lead a procession up Haven Street, mm -hmm. Haven Street, and ascend to the Common. Okay. We will have the Reading High School um, band playing right on the Common, like okay. they always do, sure. which is great. Sure. And we're also planning on having Austin Prep Chorus sing okay. on in Eastern Banks Lobby, yeah. right on Haven Street. Okay. So that should be nice. Yeah. Um, but and then at 4:30, people really are gathered. Santa arrives via fire truck, and okay. that's when we light the and lights. And then the lights go up. And of course, we'll be able to see the lights all through the holiday season. But uh, but it's really nice. The event itself is nice to be there and kind of welcome the holiday season to Reading and to Reading businesses. Well, thank you, Lisa, for being here today and sharing uh, with us all about what's going on. Specifically, just remind us of the date again. It's Sunday. November 29th? Yes, it's the Sunday after Thanksgiving. Sunday it always after has Thanksgiving. been. Sunday, November 29th, at right after Thanksgiving, and it's from 2 o'clock to 4.30. Unless you want to see Santa running yes. co-op, you might want to show Not up Not a, a bad idea early. to get there early. Or right. even go early, get your Santa photos, and then, right. you know. And then enjoy the rest of the event. Exactly. All Walk right. well, around. Th thank you for being here today. I've been talking with Lisa Egan from the Reading, North Reading Chamber of Commerce. We'll be back in just one moment here on RCTV. Hi everybody, welcome to the Old Reading Butcher Shop. My friend Tom and I are going to talk turkey today. Uh, everything that you need to know about purchasing a turkey, putting it out on the table, all the, uh, all the condiments that you're going to need, uh, everything available right here at the Old Reading Butcher Shop. Uh, first thing to remember is there's a, several questions that are pretty important before you buy the turkey. It's not as simple as it might seem. First thing you want to determine is how many people you're going to be having. And if that wasn't enough, you really need to find out what your breakdown of those people are. Uh, more men, more women, how many children. All of this is going to give you an accurate determination as to the size of the turkey and possibly the type of tur turkey that you're looking to purchase. Uh, first, let's start with the whole bird. Um, they're available domestic, they are available wild. The two differences is, one is, uh, one's a bird that can fly and one's not. You want to concentrate on a domestic bird. Uh, they're available in two pound increments. They start at a 10 to 12 pound range and they go all the way up to 28 to 30 pounds. Uh, our cutoff date on the purchase of these is November the 17th. Uh, after that time, we won't be able to positively be able to guarantee anybody who's going to be wanting to purchase something like that. A uh, few guidelines too that are important as we're talking about this is the poundage and what you want to benchmark for the weight that you will need. Uh, generally, um, if it's a bone-in turkey that you're looking at, then you want to look at something that's going to estimate out at about a pound per person. And that's for a company that you're going to invite over that will be a good balance of white meat and dark meat. However, if you do have um, a good amount of your customers or a good amount of your company that is going to be white meat eaters, you want to increase that benchmark up to about two pounds per person. Um, and that certainly is, is a very, very good way to go if you're thinking about uh, leftovers or possibly seconds later on later on the next day. Uh, one of the other types of turkeys that are available to you is a boneless turkey breast. Uh, obviously primarily white meat with the skin on. Uh, that's something that is uh, just very accommodating for a lot of people that don't want to get into issues of carving. Uh, it's a lot easier to cook. Um, and by the way we have cooking instructions for whatever size or type of turkey that you're going to be considering. Uh, third type would be just a regular bone-in turkey breast. Uh, some people do like the drumsticks without the wings attached to it. So all of those are considerations and we've got everything from top to bottom and everything in between. Turkeys obviously are generally best cooked in 
and oven at 325 degrees. But there are a number of people that like to cook them on a grill. Uh, grills are becoming increasingly popular. Uh, quite a few people too are taking on the task of trying them in a deep fryer. If you're going to try them in a deep fryer, there's one or two requirements that you're going to need. One is this, and the other is a fire extinguisher. You better be darn careful if you're using a fryer. Um, too many times we hear about issues that you really don't want to encounter, especially when you have loved ones over the house. So having said that, my suggestion is keep it safe, keep it to the oven. Um, a number of you may not want to even consider a turkey for Thanksgiving. Not a problem right here. Um, we've got everything from eggplant to our own homemade lasagna. We've also got a meatless lasagna as well. Um, a variety of different desserts. Stay away from the pie when you can have raisin bread pudding, strawberry rhubarb, apple crisp. This is stuff that's to die for. Um, we make our own butternut squash. Our own, if you've had our turkey gobbler sandwich here, which is insanely popular, uh, you want to consider purchasing some of our very own stuffing, which we make here every single day. Um, one thing you want to steer away from is getting a turkey that's around the same size as this potato. Bad news. You don't want to try that. Too many potatoes, too little turkey. If you have any questions, you can always feel free to call the store. More than happy to help you. We have instruction sheets. Uh, ordering line is open. I can't say it's 24-7, but we're here generally 10 to 6 Monday through Friday, 9 to 4 on Saturday, and 11 to 4 on Sunday. Um, and please feel free. Um, just contact us straight away, and we're happy to give you all the knowledge that we, that we have. Um, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Enjoy the holiday, and hope to see everybody soon.